Welcome back to Sheet Metal is Fun. We got a big project today. We ain't gonna fly an airplane. We're not gonna burn rubber. We're gonna bend sheet metal. We're gonna make a tool tray and you're gonna come away with a sense of accomplishment. Let's head on inside. Welcome back. Here we are at the bench. We got a piece of metal. We are going to make a tool tray today. It's a flat piece of metal. When this lesson is over, you're going to have a tray that you can carry, whatever you feel like carrying. Tools, snacks, gardening, whatever you want. Come on in a little bit. I want you to see the scribe lines. I took the drawing that we left on the board and I transferred that onto the metal. But one of the things I want you to know is the, the way we decided what size to make our tool tray was we decided what we're going to put in our tool tray. So I want to be able to put this hammer in it. So we left a little bit of wiggle room on either side. You're not gonna be able to see it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline the base. This outline right here is the, the bottom, the base of our uh, tool tray. Then what I did is I decided how high would I like the tool tray? I'd like it to be that high. So this is a copy, uh, not only a visual aid, which is very important in what we're doing, but it also made it easier when I came over to make, to transfer these marks onto our metal, I was able to just draw the base, put our end on here, take the same end, put this end on there. So not only was it a visual aid, it always also saved us time in the layout. Across the top is going to be our handle. Let's go ahead and mark this. That's going to be our handle. We're going to notch that in just a minute. And uh, this is going to be a tool tray, but more importantly, It's going to be a sense of accomplishment. We're going to take a flat piece of metal and we're going to turn it into something useful. And in doing that, we're going to stimulate our mind and we're going to gain a new level of respect for ourselves. Come on in and let's start the notching process. Let's start with our handle. We are going to first put on our glasses. And let's notch this handle. We're gonna go here. Remember from last lesson, always cover the drop. This is just a notch straight in. This is gonna tell us where we're gonna bend the handle. So we're not removing any metal here. Again, cover that piece so when it comes off, it goes down. Today we are going to bend this tool tray with tools that you may already have. And if not, one quick trip to the hardware store and you make a small investment <clears throat> into what could be a hobby or it could be a living. I've been doing sheet metal work for over 40 years and I made a, a very good living at it. And um, <clears throat> a lot of our schools out where we're at have abandoned the mechanical sciences and uh, now there's a, a very wide shortage of people who can visualize mechanical things and people who can go out and do mechanical things. So. I want to encourage you guys to, to take on something that maybe you've never thought of doing before. Some of you are out there, you're watching this video series, you already do some of these things. I think even for those of you that have done this before, maybe, maybe you'll see something new. 
I've been doing this, like I said, over 40 years. I probably learn two things every day. And you never know where that source of knowledge is going to come from. So I'm glad you guys stopped by. Let's go ahead and notch this. This is our tool tray right here. We're going to cut with our red snips. And I think we covered on a, a previous lesson. We never go to the end of our snip unless we're notching. So we're going to cut this one. These are lines that I laid out in the interest of time. I laid out the toolbox, but the toolbox, tool tray that we're making today is just as we drew on the board. And let's see. Right now I'm notching the hems. These are the parts we're going to fold around the end of the tool tray so that we don't have any sharp edges. Notice I covered that with my thumb. Always be careful of your eyes. Here we go. That's one. So we're one fourth of the way done already. You squeeze your snips to a comfortable amount of closing. Closing. And then you move them forward and never go to the end of your snips. Unless you're notching. Today's episode is going to be interesting. We have a shop full of sweet tools. But in order to help some of you get started and learning something new, we're going to use some pretty basic tools. So here, this line represents the base of our tray. Here's our end. That is the end of the tray with the hems added to it. And we're going to fold those hems over. That's going to be the next thing. We're going to be over there doing that in a couple of minutes. Let's go ahead and cut this side out. Squeeze and push forward. Every one of these hems is a half an inch. I do them in a half an inch just because it's a nice round number. You could do these in any size you want. The, the wider the hem, the easier it is to bend. In other words, a one inch hem would be easier to bend than a half inch hem. But for what we're doing today, half inch hem is pretty sweet. So since I'm notching, I'm gonna put the end of my snips at the end of my cut. It's the only time we squeeze them all the way. I think we did this last time, but I'm gonna show you now. Noticed I notched it the wrong way, but I'm putting my thumb over the top of it. Trying to, I was trying not to block the block the notch from the camera. Let's give you a quick demonstration on snips. If you go all the way to the end and close your snip, <clears throat> you basically create 
uh, a saw blade. And uh, this is way harder than your skin. And it will take every opportunity to prove that. So don't put yourself in that position. Squeeze the snip, push it forward, squeeze and push. Look, that's the same cut. And look right here. No way I'm doing that to that. I'm gonna put that in the trash can. You're gonna, if you, if you cut like this, you're not gonna make any friends at the work. And you're gonna be, you're gonna constantly be standing in a puddle of blood. Everybody around you is gonna have to wear their earplugs from the sound of you screaming all day long. All right, we are ready to start bending. We've got our handle. We have our sense of accomplishment. Let's go over and bend this up. <laughs> this is kind of weird for me to do because we're standing in a shop of tools that are made to do this, but every one of them is uh, expensive and heavy. And uh, so what we're gonna do is I went to the hardware store. I bought a couple of clamps. I like a nice commercial grade clamp. Who knows, if you take your hobby a little farther and you decide to do it more often than not, it'll be nice to start it with a, a high quality clamp and then you're never gonna outgrow them. You're always gonna be glad you started out with something uh, so that you don't have to upgrade down the road. So a clamp like this, I think these are around $26 but there are discount uh, tool stores in, in every major city in America right now. Feel free to buy the, the most affordable option that you can. This is our other big purchase. They call this a uh, pair of duck bills, depending on the region you live in. These can be duck bills, hand seamers, or tongs. And this gives you a chance to clamp a large piece of sheet metal and then do the bending by hand. So today's lesson is how would you make this tool tray if you weren't standing in a room full of really expensive sheet metal tools? We're gonna to do some hammering today. Well, not hammering, we're gonna use a wooden mallet. But uh, let's start early on in the show with me letting you know that I always wear earplugs. They call us 10 knockers, sheet metal workers. They call us 10 knockers and there, there will be uh, no sense of explaining that nickname to you here in just a minute. So what I've done is I scribed the metal at the place where we wanna fold the hem. There's a half inch scribe. We're gonna go over in the next lesson how to make a scribe and, and how we make these marks in metal. If you look really closely, you can see all the marks that I'm gonna be bending on today. All right, here we go. First high-tech piece of material. I'm using a sawhorse here because I had one, but you can use a workbench, a table, you have available. We're going to clamp, we're going to clamp the metal between the wood and the table and that's going to give us a crisper bend because what we're going to do is bend this entire tool tray up with things that you may already have. So one of the things we're going to do is we're gonna tap this hem up because we're gonna fold this and it's actually gonna go all the way over like a hem on a garment. So you always start at one end and work your all way all the way across and then just keep going back. We don't wanna start at one end and take it up to completion. We're gonna start at one end or the other, your choice. Let's start right here. We're gonna bend up. We're gonna follow back. Adding a little more bend every time. Changing the angle of our mallet. Very 
Every time we strike the metal, we're getting it closer to 90 degrees. 90 degrees would be straight up. So this is, uh, we're not striking hard because we don't want to stretch the material. We want to bend the material. So you can see I have a very loose grip on the mallet. So that way if I accidentally hit my thumb when I'm going across, it doesn't hurt because that's how, that's how lightly we're tapping our project. We don't want to stretch the metal, we just want to bend it. Now we're going to back our board off a little bit. We're going to make sure that we can see a little bit of table right here. We don't want to be out here because that's going to give us a real rounded edge and we want a crisper edge. So we want to make sure we can see the table behind our project. Clamp it down. Here we go. We're going to do the same thing we did last time. Start at one end, work our way across. Tapping it not lightly because like we don't want to stretch the metal. We just want to fold it. We want to hem it over. So you can tell by the way I'm holding the mallet, I'm just letting it fall onto the piece and do the work. If the mallet falling on the piece doesn't accomplish the amount of work that you need to do, you got to get a bigger mallet. What we don't want to do Hit the mallet down and try to hold it down. Let the mallet do the work. If you need more, get a bigger mallet. We got lots of mallets. Now we've got a hem folded over pretty far. I want you to take, see, can you see that? If you look at it, it's almost a U bend right now. And now what we're going to do. From this vantage point, I can see it, that it's irregular. It's not perfect. Uh, but from holding it from here, I'm going to strike the hem right here. And I'm going to close it up. But from right here, I can see. I can watch it fold. All right, here we go. Going to work our way across. A little lightly. Tapping it very lightly because I want this on the end of the project. I want it to look like a teardrop. That's the most strength. If you fold the metal all the way over on itself and make it tight, this edge will get wavy. But that teardrop is where you get the strength to make this stay, stay straight and hold its shape. That's one. Here we go. Let's do that again. I had a good time doing that. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Same thing. We're going to start on one end and work our way all the way across. Take as many passes as you need to to do what we need to do. Taken. That's coming along nice. We're going to back our board off a little bit. Since we have to fold it over, we have to move our board back to create that space that we need to have room for the hem. Notice I can see a little bit of table all the way across. If our piece is hanging over the table, it'll put a back break in it. It'll put an, uh, an opposite crease across our project. We don't want to do that. Here we go. I 
I like it. Let's take a look at that. Check our progress. Progress is good. So I'm holding it and looking at the area where it needs to come down. And uh, as opposed to this, if I'm hitting it from this side, I can't check my progress because I can't see what I'm accomplishing. So I'm going to hold it from this side and I'm tapping it at an angle this way. So from this vantage point, I can watch it go down and that way I know I'm only getting the amount that I want. like that all right now here's where our hand seamers come in we have some shorter hemmed edges that we want to hem let's go ahead and do that all right it's time to get serious and put my glasses on here we go i'm clamping it on the line and i have to make sure that i'm on the table i don't want to bend this out over the vacant air got to bend it over the table that way i can push down and i get a sharper edge now you notice my hand seamers are not as long as the area that we're going to hem so we want to make sure we overlap now now we've overlapped same thing we're going to just keep going back and forth over that overlap and that's going to give us the best possible finish Did you notice every time I clamped it, I made sure there was overlap. Now, since we're right here, let's get this close. Let's flip it over to our place where we can see what we want to do. There we go. Let's do three more of those. We're going to clamp it on the line. We're going to move it over the table. We're going to push down and bend at the same time. Now, here, we're going to clamp it on. Push down and bend. Now, we're going to go back, overlap that bend. Overlap. There we go. Get close. Go back to where we have a good view of what our, uh, what our progress looks like. And I like that. The end is easy because it's shorter than our tool. So we are going to clamp that over the table. Look at that, that was so short, so easy. We're gonna do it all in one. Here we go. Now our vantage point. So you can see now we have hemmed all these edges over. So the end of our tool tray will have a nice finished edge. That side's done. Let's do this one, same way. Over the table, pushing down and bending. Pushing down and bending. Let's get it close. Finish it off. Clamping it on the line, pushing down and bend. Let's get it close. Finish it off.
On to the easy one. Over the table. That's just much short when it goes easy. Now we're going to bend up the side, the main body. Let's get our board back on here. We're going to put it on our marks. You can use C-clamps in this uh, operation. I like the vice grip. The reason I like it, it's a one-handed operation and it's a lot faster. Otherwise, we're turning a T-handle down. You have to hold it with one hand to turn it with the other. But that's just personal preference and that's because this is what I do for a living and time is always uh, a constraint. But if you're doing this as a hobby, time isn't a constraint. Here we go. I'm gonna lift this up with my thumb just to kind of help with the bending. Put a little pressure on it. I'm gonna come along here. A little bit at a time. If you try to do it all, you're gonna put dents in it. So since we've got it this far, we're gonna push it over to the board. Now we still have our tabs here. We're gonna go ahead and bend our tabs up. Since the tab is small, we're not gonna to try to bend something small with our hands. It has too much leverage against us. Look at that, we're halfway there. It's not quite 90. You can probably see that. So let's get it back on the table. Make sure we can see a little bit of our table. We have to back the board off a little bit because all this metal, any metal that we use other than dead soft aluminum, it all has a memory. To In order to get a 90 degree bend, we have to bend the material past 90 and let it spring back with its memory, let it spring back to the actual dimension that we want. So right now, we had it there, but the natural spring back of the material brought it back. So we're just gonna push it. That's the reason we backed our board off. So we can, if you watch, we're going past 90. And then whenever we're done, it's gonna come back out where we want it. That's the reason we needed to back it off. Now you can see it's a little closer to 90. We can fine tune that as we go. All right, man. We're making some pretty good progress here today. Putting the edge of the board right on our scribe line. We're gonna get it, put a little bit of pressure on there. Uh, and part of this, the reason we're putting pressure on it is to prevent so much uh, spring back. If we just strike it, you can see the metal, it wants to return back to its former state. It wants to use its memory to stay flat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that option away. I'm going to apply some pressure. And then whenever we strike it with the same amount of force, you notice it doesn't have the opportunity to spring back like it did. So we're just going to add a little bit of force here. And if you, you can't, if you're, 
If you can't do it with your hand, you can use your hip. So with my grip here, we're just try trying to prevent some of the spring back. Just like when we were bending the hems, we want to slowly work our way across the project and we don't want to stay in one place for very long. I should have left those clamps on so we can bend this half inch tab. One more. Now we're gonna back it off a little bit because we gotta allow for that spring back in our material that has a memory. We're gonna add a little bit in here and we're just gonna go along and tap this very lightly. It isn't gonna take much. And then whenever we let go, now right here, we've gone a little too far. I'll show you how easy that is to fix. Are you ready? Here we go. There. I didn't even break a sweat. There's our pan with our two, our hems are folded over on our ends. Our sides are folded over. And we've already got this board here. We're gonna go ahead and clamp this on. Notice my clamp is past this corner. Let's move this one down. Now we need, don't go anywhere, I'm just going to grab a screwdriver and be right back. Good time to let the train go by anyway. So what we're going to do, we want this tab to go to the inside of our tray, not the outside. So I'm going to put this screwdriver here and I'm only twisting, I'm not adding any, no downward force. If we were pushing down, you can see what kind of trouble you can get into. So I'm only twisting. What I'm doing is I'm telling this tab, I want it to go inside the tray. Only twisting, no downward movement, just twisting. Now, now that we've convinced this tab to go to the inside of the tray on both sides, can you see that offset right there? The tab will go to the inside of the pan. Here we go. So now we talked about memory earlier. I'm going to take this end a little bit past 90. And then when it springs back, it's going to be right where we want it. board is too long to clamp this one the same way we did that one. But look at this. Same thing. The board is on the line. Now we need to make sure that our tab goes to the inside. So I'm on, the only thing I'm doing is turning. You can tell by the way I'm holding the screwdriver, all I'm doing is twisting. We don't want to grab the screwdriver and try to push down. You can see, I can see four places that I would not like my hand to be if, if the screwdriver switched out and my hand went anywhere in this neck of the woods, all bad. Here we go. Tabs are going to go to the inside of our tray.
I'm just going to push on the back side a little bit here. There we go. It's had a little bit of bend on here. Look at that. I like it. Look at that. That was a flat piece of metal. Let's bend up the handle. We're right here. We'll do the same thing, half inch hems. I like a half because it's an easy number to work with, and it's also an easy size to bend. And as with any lesson that we do, We want to always strive for efficiency. And so I try to do things in the most efficient way because that way I get done faster and the customer gets their project and I get their money. That's two good things. So I'm always open to any suggestions. If you have a way that you can do anything that we do if you have a way that gets it done faster and more efficiently and you still come up with the same finished project that we that our customer deserves, I'd love to hear your input. I like I said I learn two things every day. Maybe you're going to be that one that teaches me something today. Here we go. A little bit at a time. Nice and easy. it off a little bit take it a little over 90 start at one end work your way down I could have moved my board back a little more matter of fact let's do that because I want to give our project room to develop and have a place to go while we're tapping it. All right, here we go. I'm glad we took the time to remove our board. That's way better. Here we go. Just like we did last time on our tool tray. Let's take this over a little bit more. Now we're going to flip it around so we can watch our progress. Here we go. I like it. That's one. the end of our board up with the scribe line on our metal. board off far enough that our hem has a place to go.
a little more. Finish it up. Remember, on a hem, we want it to have a teardrop shape to it. You got to have that teardrop. That's where the strength comes from. If we folded our metal over, if we fold it over too tight, let's take a look at this. If we fold our piece over and smash it tight like this, then it's still wavy. But what we want is we want to have, I've exaggerated that for clarity, but this is what we want. The fact that it's an open teardrop, that makes that, when this thing is coming along here, that makes that edge a lot, a lot more sturdy and it holds its shape better. So we don't want to hit it so hard that we flatten out that teardrop. Plus, when we get ready to assemble this, the teardrop is gonna, gonna come into play one more time. All right, we got two more bends to make in our handle. Let's go ahead and line up on those notches. Nice and easy. tell the one inch bend had a little more resistance to bending than the half inch did. Now, the only way we can grab this one is if we do it in the front. Just like we did when we bent up the base of our tool tray. Remember, we had to move the board to the opposite, uh, opposite configuration. The board is lined up on our notch. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lift and we're going to tap this around. I'm going to make one last pass across here just to square that bend up. I'm going to pull and we're going to tap it to square it up. So because of the nature of our bend, uh, the way our board went in there, it doesn't, we talked about the spring back earlier. And since the only way to grab this with our board prevented us from allowing for that spring back, um, we're gonna take this and we're just gonna lean on it a little bit. It's really easy to overdo it. Look at that. Now we have three tabs on the ends. This is how we attach our handle to our tool tray. Let's pick up our hand seamers again. We can't start in the middle because we can't get our tool in there. So we're gonna start at one end. We're gonna push it into the mark, clamp it, 
bend it 90. Now that we've bent that one, now we have access to the second one, the longer one. We'd bend it 90. Same thing here. Last one. Bend it 90. Now we've bent all the three of those out. These are going to be our attachment points. We're going to attach the handle to the tray. Same thing here. We're going to start at one side. You could be either side. Let's do this one the opposite way. Once we do one of these small ones, that gives us full access to the wider one across the bottom of the handle. Last one's the easiest one. There we go. Let's go back over to the workbench and put our tool tray together. This thing's gonna start taking, uh, taking shape. All right, we're back. We got our tool tray, we've hemmed the edges, we've bent up the sides. Now we're gonna put the pop rivets in these corners and complete the corner. I want you to come in really close because this is where that teardrop we talked about is gonna work to our advantage. You can see the teardrop right here. Now what's gonna happen is this hem is gonna go inside that teardrop. I've got the smallest little screwdriver. I'm gonna put it right there in that teardrop. Now I'm not gonna push because again, we're putting ourselves in a predicament if we start pushing. So I want you to use the inertia of the hammer. So all I'm doing is placing the screwdriver into the teardrop, some light taps. You see how that affected the teardrop? Let's do that over here as well. Just a small light tap, no pushing. All we wanna do is open that hem up. Same thing again, small light taps, no pushing. The pushing, that's where you get yourself in trouble. Small light taps. No pushing. Now here's where the magic happens. This is the tab that we bent up when we were bending our pan. Now that tab is going to go inside that hem. Did you see what just happened right there? The tab goes inside the hem. Now we're gonna tap it with a hammer. We're not gonna push. Man, look what a nice corner that is. Now we're gonna clamp it. We're gonna put in our first two pop rivets. Tap it one more time. All right, here we go. Always make sure that your, your body parts are away from the rotating cutting device. Here we go. Remember our pop rivet lesson? Put the pop rivet in the hole. The rivet is going to pull that mandrel through the hollow rivet. It's going to expand. Here we go. You can see the back side of the rivet. How is it expanded? And that's what keeps it from falling back down through the hole. We've got one in. Let's put in our second one. You want to make sure when you're drilling that you're not just pushing so hard that whenever the drill bit goes through the work, work is anything that we're making. This is called the work. That the drill bit doesn't try to gather you into a, a tornado of pain. Now look, we've added our two rivets. That's how that corner is going to come together. That tab came inside and it slid inside that tear dropped him. Doesn't that make a nice corner? I'm gonna tap this over. Dress it up with a file. We 
When you use a file, you only cut on the push. All right, you guys take a coffee break. I'm going to finish these other three sides, and I'll see you right back here. All right, we're back. Hopefully you guys went and uh, took a breather, had a cup of coffee, or any other beverage of your choice. We're going to attach our handle to our tray. And uh, the way this goes in, I think it's kind of magic. Come on in nice and close. You'll notice we turned these three tabs out. And we turned our hems in on the end of our tool tray. And we're working on our sense of accomplishment Sense of a breath, man. What is this? Some, some kind of joke? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a joke. Man, that's in my handwriting, too. Some mysteries we're never going to figure out. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Let's get back to the handle. All right. Here we go. So we have our flanges turned out on our handle. And the hem is folded over on our ends. Watch, I want you to see the handle is going to slide under that hem, under this hem, right here. And look at that. Wow, what a nice fit. See how that all locked together? The tabs on the handle go under the hems of the end. Let's try it again. Maybe we just got lucky. All right, here we go. Tab of the handle, under the hem, under the hem. Look at that, it wasn't lucky after all. So, the way this handle locked into our end cap, that's already a tool tray. But we've come this far, let's go ahead and put the rivets in here. So here we go. I'm gonna put our vice grip on here so here's what I'm gonna do. I want you to come in real close. We're gonna drill a rivet and, and rivet the handle to the end cap. I'm gonna put my vice grip on here in a way, I want you to look at the corner of my vice grip. Let me erase some of that ink off of there. See where the corner of my vice grip is? That's gonna tell me where I need to put my rivet. So we're gonna put our rivet just off the corner of that vice grip. Here we go. All right. Take our vice grip off. I like it. Let's do the same thing again. So we're gonna locate where we need to put our hole by putting it just off the corner. So what we're doing with our vice grip is we're transferring this mark to the back side. So we know our hole has to be right there. Just off the corner of our vice grip. Take the vice grip off. Put our handle back in. The flange goes under the hem. Flange under the hem. Push it up. We're going to locate our hole with our vice grip. Let's put that hole in there. Just off the corner of our vice grip. All right. Get it started in the hole. Take the vice grip off. Load up our last rivet. We'll locate our hole. With our vice grip. So now we know we want our hole just off the corner of that vice grip. I'm 
gonna get the pop rivet started in the hole, take the vice grip off. Look at that. Now, we have a tool tray and a sense of accomplishment. We have a handle. We made it, we decided how, what size to make our base by some of the things we wanted to put in it. Look at that, snips, there's a screwdriver, vice grip, file, rubber mallet. We can put the small stuff in the top. We can put pencils in the handle. I like the big old good ones, and I like the good old big ones. Look at how good they fit in the handle. Also, you, they carry snacks. Savory. Sweet. There you go. If you go back to our prior episode, you'll see that this looks just like the one in the drawing. Thank you guys for stopping by today. I want to see if you guys can uh, send me a picture of your tool tray. Man, I'd love to see it. I would like to see these thoughts and these ideas and these skills put into place. It's going to it would change your life. It'll change your life. I guarantee it. You'll see the world in a different way. Thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you guys came along. See you next time on Sheet Metal is Fun. <laughs>